All right, cool. So we are live. Good morning, YouTube world. With me today, I've got uh, Matt Sousey. Is I Did I say your last name correctly? No, I, I never corrected you. It's Susie. Susie. All right, Susie. So there you go. Sorry about that. It's okay. Um, all right, so let's cut really quick. So you're in Columbus, Ohio, correct? That's right. Give me just kind of a um, quick rundown of the marketplace what is it like give me the lay of the land real fast yeah um we so i've only been licensed since um august and fizzbos were pretty hot maybe two to three a day since we're closer to christmas now we might be lucky to get one every other day Got um, it. yeah market's super hot right here as well yeah average price point just based on looking on the list that you that i have is um 250-ish roughly? Yeah, that's about right. All right. So very similar to my market here in Michigan. So um, I'm going to be calling in Matt's market today in uh, Columbus. Are you an Ohio State fan? I, I didn't go to school there, but uh, I guess by default, yeah. All right. Fair enough. I won't hold that against you. <laughs> you know what? It's hard because you guys are so good and Michigan is so bad. It's really, really frustrating. <laughs> So, all right, here's what I want to do. We have a good little handful of for sale by owners and some for rent by owners. And so I'm going to call a few and then we'll talk through it. You've seen these before. You've participated in these before. And then um, we'll give you a shot to, to make some calls and uh, see what we can do. See if we can generate some appointments, some opportunities, some leads to fill your pipeline as we finish out 2020. Sound like a plan? Sounds fair. Awesome. All right. So just follow with me. I'm going to start right at the top of our of our list and uh, I'll work our way down. Is this is this uh, this is the only new one you said? Yeah, she's brand new. Got it. OK. I don't know if you saw last week, but we'll probably want to text a lot of these people too, if we know it's the right number. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Six, one, four, three, two. All right. So because that's a fresh for sale by owner, absolutely text that one. Just first name, question mark. Okay. And then when she responds, I'll tell you what to do next. And I'll call the next one. Because... Remember, obviously our goal with every for sale by owner is to make contact to determine whether or not it's gonna go into our follow-up uh, system or not. She has an iPhone. That's good. I like her already. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Patricia? Yes? Hey, this is Brandon. I'm a realtor. I was calling about the property for sale. Is that still available by chance? Uh, Brandon, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, we're negotiating with somebody right now, and uh, uh, I'd like to take your name and phone number, and if it doesn't go through, call you. How's that sound? Yeah, that's perfect. Why don't I do this? I'm going to have my business partner, Matt, just send you just a quick email so you'll have our info on file. And if something doesn't work out, we'd be happy to help. Does that sound fair? Definitely. Yes, right. Uh, right. My email is... So I will have my business partner, Matt, send you an email and uh, we'll stay in touch. Hopefully this deal goes through, but if it doesn't, maybe we can look at some yeah. other options. Fair enough? Yes. Okay. Do you have somebody interested or what? No, at this point, I want to kind of see what was going on and, and kind of touch base with you to see what we can do to help. Have you already found a new home or, or did you not live there in the okay, first place? this is a, a rental of ours. It's 
not our home. We live on a farm. Yeah. Oh, good for you. Well, I've got yeah. you really quick. If for some reason that offer doesn't go through, mm -hmm. would you consider maybe meeting with us looking at some other options if it made sense? Well, it just depends. Uh, it just depends. It just depends. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. fair enough. We'll have a great morning, Patricia, and uh, we'll send you an email here shortly, okay? All right, thank you very much. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye. I mean, that's what we want to do, right? Yeah. So, so she, um, I got her email. I just muted that so that didn't go through, right, on YouTube? Correct. All right, so um, you. this is exactly what we talked about in our coaching call yesterday. You call a FISBO, they've got an offer. A lot of people are working through these offers. A lot of them you know, don't go through. I mean, it sounded like based on her conversation, she even brought it out. If it doesn't go through, then I'd be happy to talk. So we're absolutely going to send her an email. We'll send her the for sale by owner backup plan, put her in your follow-up system. Okay. And I'll text you or I'll message you all the emails that I capture. Okay. Perfect. All right, cool. Uh, the next one is also fairly new. I think maybe a day or two. Okay, perfect. Did that other one respond to your text yet? No. Okay. All right. So that is the, um, the wife's cell phone. Okay. So you can shoot her a text. So she goes by Sandy. If you want to send her a text and it's then that, I'll see uh, your phone. 614 or 216? Uh, 614. Okay. Yeah, I'll call the other one right now. Huh, that's weird. I don't know why I can't. Let me just download this to see if I can maneuver the information better. All right, there we go. Please leave your message for two, one, six. All right, so that must be the other one. All right, so let's keep rocking and rolling here. How many, when you prospect, um, typically how how long do you prospect for daily, would you say? Uh, I have not been consistent, Brandon. Sure. And so when you, when you do do it, is it like 30-minute sessions? Are they yeah. hour sessions? Yeah, more like 30. Yeah, okay. And it's hard too because I don't have a dialer. So I like I told you off air, it's kind of unorganized. Yeah. So I, I know what I need to do. I just need to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I hand dialed for years, just so you know, just like this. Okay. Hi there, Dorothy. It is. Can hey. I help you? Yeah, this is Brandon. I'm a realtor. I was calling about the house for sale. Is that still available by chance? Uh the condo? Yeah, on Peach Tree. Yes, it is. Okay, got it. And I was just curious if you were open to the idea of an agent bringing you a buyer at this time, would that be something you would consider? Well, an agent's going to bring me a buyer today, but I'm not paying um, the fee. Yeah, of course, of course. Right? I, in, in this but yes. Okay, makes yes. sense. In this market, obviously, you'll have no, no uh, issues selling the property on your own. Do you live in the condo now or have you already moved? I, uh, I do not. My son is in the process of moving out. And so... Um, uh, we're ready to, you know, show it, and um, they showed it last evening, and show it again today. And that's only been on the market for a couple of days. Zillow hasn't even had time yet to put it through their system. So I I'm see that. Ready. Yeah. And you're and you're asking one seventy nine. Is that correct? 
That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So that seems like a great price. And like I said, with the market being as, as great yeah. as it is in Westerville, I'm sure you're going to sell it yeah. pretty quickly. If for some reason, can I ask you why I have you, Dorothy, if you can't sell it on your own, uh, maybe in a month or so, would you consider possibly meeting with me and looking at some other options? Um, I, I wouldn't want to commit to that. I've done a lot of, um, of real estate things in the past. So I'm, I definitely would use one of the realtors probably that I've used before. Yeah, fair enough. Sorry to say that, but I've worked with them. They were the ones who I bought a condo for my son and for my daughter. Totally can work with them. Yeah. I love the loyalty. I completely appreciate that. If that's, if it, if you're okay with it, what I'll do is I'm just going to have my business partner send you an email with our for sale by owner backup plan. Take a look at it. And if it's something maybe you want to review with us at a later time, we could do that. Does that sound reasonable? That sounds reasonable. Thank you so much. No problem. What is the best email for you typically? There you go. I love it. You were like, just a symptom language. We're just going to send it anyway. Yeah. So, so remember, so that was another thing that we worked on the coaching call yesterday, that five-step process. So, right. So step one, totally agreeable. She has a friend in the business. Hey, listen, I totally get it. I respect the loyalty. Step two is that assumptive statement, right? So why don't I do this? I'll go ahead and send you an email, take a look at it. If something you want to review with us later, we can do that. And then I gain agreement by using fair enough. And again, I hate to say things work every time, but you, you could see that type of language pattern, how responsive prospects are. Yeah. Because again, they respond that way, Matt, because it's their way of thinking they're off the hook. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Right. So, so we get the email address, we send them our for sale by owner backup plan. We call her every Monday, we stay in touch with her and then we see where the opportunities lie. Now, how, now had she completely rejected me there and said, no, no, don't, I don't want to, don't send me anything. Um, obviously we wouldn't have forced the lead. I wouldn't, we wouldn't put her in your follow-up system. Uh, but because she was open and at least, you know, reasonable, um, we're going to, we're going to at least send her the plan. We'll put her in our follow-up system and we'll see what happens. Okay. Cool. Yep. Awesome. All right. So where am I at? All right, here we go. Neither of them responded, by the way. Okay, no problem. Just let me know if they do. Yeah, I was saying I, I hand dialed for a long time. I mean, just like this, if I did this for an hour, I would have 10, 15 contacts, which is plenty. Yeah. Hi, you have reached Deborah Fisher and I am unavailable. All right, so you can send that one a text. Um, I think that's the wrong number, though. Oh, yeah, you know what? I see that, too. Yep, I think you're right. Let me call the other one. Hey there, Dean. Is this Dean? Yeah. Dean, this is Brandon. I'm a realtor. I was calling about the property for sale. Is it still available? Yes, it is. It is. Okay, got it. And I see here you're you're asking 199. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Got it. Got it. Hey, I, I respect the fact that you're selling the property on your own, Dean. I was curious if you'd be open to the idea if an agent brought you a buyer for the property at this time. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'll work with you. Okay. Now, is this a property that you live in or is it vacant? It's vacant. It is. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, was this like an old rental or something? What's that? Was this an investment property for you at one point? No. Uh, my wife lived down in, uh, or my wife worked down in Columbus. We, we actually have a home in Cyrus. Okay. And, uh, my wife worked uh, downtown Columbus, and it was like a over sixty mile 
uh, drive every day for her, and I didn't want her driving down there to wear it tonight. So uh, I talked to her, and we talked about it, and so she bought the condo, and uh, we've had it ever since. It's about, uh, we've had it you know, probably 20, yeah, she got it in 1996. Oh, got it. Okay. And so now good for you. Good for you. Especially when the market's, you know, as high as it is right now. So that makes a lot of sense. You know, Dean, when I, while I've got you here, you know, if with the market being the way that it is, I'll sh- I'm sure you'll have no problem selling it on your own. But if you do maybe 30, 60, 90 days from now, Dean, would you consider possibly meeting with me and looking at some other options if you can't sell the property on your own? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Is it so? What I'd like to do uh, is have my business partner Matt uh, reach out to you this afternoon, maybe schedule some time to come and see the place. Are you around on yeah. the week? Are you around to show it, or is that is it tough for you to get get over there? Uh, no, I, I can come down. I, I've been coming from Sire, so I can come down and meet you. Okay. What I'm going to do is, like I said, my business partner, his name is Matt. I'll have him give you a call this afternoon. And then, you know, when he sees the place, when he's there, he can kind of share with you a little bit about how our program works. And then Dean, you can decide if working with us might be a potential option down the road. Does that sound fair? Okay. Yep. Very very good, Dean. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye-bye. There you go, my friend. Excellent. So... We use the 2.0 script. I mean, that that absolutely is a listing appointment. Okay. So what I want you to do, so did you hear that whole call that I come through okay? Yeah, yeah. He actually is a little bit far away, but um, yeah. The property is or he is? He is. Okay, so you, did you hear what he said? So you heard you heard like, hey, would you be open if, we, if you can't sell it? And he said, yes. Yeah. Um, so, so call him. Okay. Right. Late morning, set an appointment with him, go see him yep. and treat it as a listing appointment, go over exactly what it is that we can do to help him. And he sounds like a great guy. I mean, it's a secondary property. So motivation is high. He's absolutely selling it. Matt, that is, that is like, it doesn't get any better than that. Like that is what you look for every single day. And we got that in 18 minutes of calling. Okay. Excellent. You know, that, that's the power of prospecting, you know, like you couldn't pay a company to get you a lead of that quality for free because we just put in the work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts in hearing that call? I mean, have you had a, a FISBO call that has been like that in your uh, experience so far? Um, so I'm, I was using 1.0 for a while. So I was always going there with, you know, not really presenting my backup plan, if you will, more yeah. just providing feedback. And um, I just recently started going to 2.0. Um, so no, I haven't really had a, a FISBO that, of that quality. Yeah. So, so remember too, right? So our first attempt is always looking for the listing opportunity, going to yeah. set the appointment based on those circumstances and only if you can't get the opportunity that we just got with that gentleman, are you going to use the, the preview appointment sort of as your backup plan, right? Yeah. So if you can't get the appointment like that, then you'll fall back on at least trying to get that face-to-face appointment to fall back on. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Cool. All right. So I'm going to have you call the next couple. Okay. And you see where we're at on our list. Um, with yeah. that one, yeah. So, so let's call the next where there's only three left, yeah. And then we'll transition over to some for rent by owners. Sound fair? That's fair. I actually emailed or mailed this with banner season. So, this next one, oh, even better. <laughs> but she's only on for sale by owner.com. Oh, there you go. That's even that is even better. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. No voicemail. Three. No voicemail. Zero. So just um, shoot, shoot, shoot that lead a text. Okay. Yeah. It sounds like she sent me to voicemail. Yep. Just just shoot shoot that person a text. And again, the strategy there is when you send the text with just their first name, 
We just want to get a response and then lead them to a phone call. Another iPhone. Okay. Hello. Hey, Larry. Yes. Larry, this is Madam a Realtor. I saw your property for sale on Glen Drive. Is that still available by chance? Yes, it is. Yeah, awesome. I'm just curious. Um, is the property vacant right now, or is there somebody living there? Uh, actually, I'm living here right now. Okay. And um, I'm just curious too. If are you open to the idea of an agent bringing you a qualified buyer at this time? Yes, I am. Awesome. And, uh, you know, with the market being so hot right now, I'm sure you'll have no problem selling it on your own. If for some reason a month or two goes by and you're not able to, would you be open to looking at other options at that point in time? Uh, I'm not actually going to put it on the market with my daughter. She's a realtor. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I would totally do the same thing. Would you be open to another perspective by chance since it's a, a, a large decision? No. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. If you're, yeah, I'm a buyer. You're interested in showing it. Oh, Absolutely. I Thank you. Flip houses on a regular basis. I usually pay 2% for buyer. Price. Excellent. Well, I'll be sure to let you know. Thanks for taking the call, Larry. Okay. Bye bye. You I stayed in the pocket. I did, but I'm like, I can't really. I mean, if, he, if his daughter's a realtor, I don't think that he's. Yeah. I, I was I was a little surprised that you even went there, but it was great practice because you you were you how do you feel right now? Are you uncomfortable with Oh, I'm always uncomfortable, but <laughs> I, have to say, I realize I have to be uncomfortable to make progress though. So. so that Matt, that was phenomenal, right? So the call, the actual phone call itself was was great. Like as far as like the words and the scripting and your tonality, the way you came across. You didn't come across salesy, uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if someone's child is a realtor, not yeah. much we can do there. We just, you know, wish them good luck and we move forward. Uh, that was great. I wasn't sure if I was building enough rapport before I asked the qualifying question. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so great question. So there does need to be a bridge from before you get into that. So what we want to do is get a little bit into their motivation and, and their why you know, why they're moving. So you'll hear me say some, so you found out that he's living there. Mm -hmm. So the next question that we want to ask is, Hey, are you, are you planning to, to relocate? Or are you, are you staying in the area? Cause when you ask it that way, it comes off non-threatening versus, Hey, where are you off to when the home sells? Sometimes I'll ask that question, but you know, if you ask it the wrong way, they'd be like, well, that's none of your business, you know? I think with me is if they sound um, short over the phone, I don't get, you get intimidated. I do get intimidated, but I also don't ask those questions because I feel like they've been beat up over the phone and they just want to get off the phone. Yeah. If it's somebody that likes to talk a lot, I'll, you know, I'm happy to talk to them. So that, so just so you know, that's very, very common. Okay. Lots of salespeople feel that same way. You know, if they're short, then it, it they almost get intimidated by that driver personality. Yeah. And what I have found is that when it's a driver personality like that, we have to increase our assertiveness and our confidence. And that is what um, impresses those people. When you back down from those personalities is when they do actually get more frustrated. Okay. Because you're playing right into their personality. If you start to... Um, I guess the, the word would be cowered down a little bit. Yeah. They'll sense that their frustration will, will increase because they feel like they can control you, but just stay in the pocket. And, and you need to ask about um, wh what the situation is like. Um, and then you can get into that qualifying question, but no, I thought you did it. I thought that was a, that was, that call was fine. Okay. Excellent. Nice job. Okay. All right. Let's call this last FISBO and then we'll, we'll move over to some for rent by owners.
Yeah, people are saying, well done. I think you did an awesome job too. Oh, good, thanks. Well, you can go back and listen, man. It was really good. You could not tell that you're nervous or anything. Please state your name after the phone and Google Voice will try to connect you. Matt. I think I've talked to this guy before. <laughs> it's all right. you have called is not available okay all right no worries shoot him a text yeah people you know you do have the script down i know that you talked about not being as consistent as you want to be but you know what to say so that was that was really good to see all right i'm going to shift over and i'm going to start calling some of these for rent by owners now have you called have you started calling for rent by owners at all i have actually um and I really enjoy calling them because they're not expecting a realtor to call. And I've gotten a few emails from it and I've sent a few emails. Um, but I don't really know what to do after that. Like, am I supposed to follow up with them or? So, so typically what I do with a for rent by owner, good question. My approach is obviously looking to see if they're, you know, potentially thinking about selling the property right now. Right. I'm trying to catch one of these landlords that are frustrated being a landlord. And I just happen to call at the right time. So that's my first thing to see if they want to sell. Most of them are open to the idea, just not right now, right? So it's something they would consider in the future. So then my next go-to, if I can't get the now opportunity, is I go right into um, sending them a quick price analysis and then we agree on when we should talk again. Now, typically I'll, I'll talk about, hey, are you getting a 12 month lease? And you'll see me do this in just a second. If they say yes, then, then I, talk, uh, I suggest that we talk in six months to see what the market's doing and how that tenant is performing uh, to see if their motivation is leaning more towards selling or staying a landlord. And so that would be your next step is sending them a quick CMA, nothing crazy, Right, just the active pendings and solds around that property. Yeah, make sense. Yep. All right, cool. So let's call through some of these and uh, see if we can generate a couple more leads for you. And remember our our um, our conversion ratios. Right, we're trying to get one one lead for every ten conversations, and that typically takes you about an hour. Right. We've been calling for thirty minutes, and we've doubled that. Right. Yeah. So that's where this will help you with your consistency, Matt, like as you're calling, because you're looking for that direct feedback, you know, because you don't make the dollars off the dials right now. So it's hard. That's why a lot of agents have a tough time being consistent. So the direct feedback is, okay, am I on pace with generating an opportunity for every 10 people I talk to or for every one hour of effort? That's how you know if you're doing well. Okay. All right. Yeah, I just had to rewatch the mindset um, module. Yeah. Because it's something I've been struggling with. Yeah, let's make a couple of dials. Maybe we could talk a little bit about that. So let's call this dude. Look at that second one down that says looking for a short-term lease. That's a good one. I thought I'm gonna, that's your call. I'm gonna call that one right now. That piques my interest, you know? Yeah. That's why I put that comment there. Oh, you put that there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Oh, did you already talk to this person? I did not. Okay, that was like in the comments or something? Yeah. Got it. 
Hi, this is Mary. Hey, Mary, this is Brandon. I'm a realtor. I was calling about the property for lease there on Highland. Is this the owner? Yes. Okay, got it. Yeah, I was just touching base. Is that property still available or do you guys already rent it out? Um, we haven't rented it out yet, but we might um, just sublease to my boyfriend's sister. We're not sure yet. Um, got it. Can I ask you, I mean, I was calling because obviously values are extremely high here in Columbus. You know, would you consider maybe selling that property at this point or is the plan to rent it out maybe for a little while before looking at that? Um, I think we are, I think we want to um, rent it out and keep it for a little bit. Sure. Yeah. It makes a ton of sense. I mean, especially with the rental market, if property values continue to go up like they have, is selling the property something you would consider maybe in the future? Um, I think in the future, it's actually my, my boyfriend's place. Sure. Um, but yes, I think we would consider it in the future. Um, but I do think we want to keep it for a while. Totally makes sense. Why don't we do this for right now? Let's not agree to anything at this time. I'm going to have my business partner, Matt, just send you just a quick email with just the pricing analysis. So you and your boyfriend can see what the property is worth right now. And then we'll just stay in touch, maybe follow up next year, see where you guys are at with the property and look at your opportunities at that point. Does that sound fair? Sure. Okay. What is the best email for you typically? And then we'll follow up maybe in like six to nine months and see if you guys like being a landlord and, and go from there. Does that sound reasonable? Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Mary. Thank you. All bye. right. Bye-bye. So that's exactly what happened, what we just talked about. So Perfect. go ahead. You got a question? Uh, no, not really. Okay. What are your thoughts? Um, I thought it was, I thought it went great. Um, when I've sent them pricing analysis, my MLS notifies me if they've opened it or not. So the that's great. That I've sent, um, not none of them have opened it. So I'm like, maybe they were just trying to be nice and to get off the phone and give me their email. I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. We don't care if they look at it. Okay. We, we got their email. I'm going to send them an email weekly. So okay. I'm going to put them on a weekly email from the MLS. Not only am I going to send them a CMA, but right, they go into our follow-up system. The follow-up system for a long-term seller nurture is a weekly email from the MLS showing them active pending solds, right? And now I'm going to follow up with her. I would follow up with her in June. Okay. And put her in your June follow-up folder so that you don't forget to give her a call. And so that's the thing you were saying, I think off air about the not being organized with your prospecting. So well, if you're, go ahead, go ahead. I am doing your folder system. Like uh, you teach. Perfect. If you hand dial, that's, that's exactly how I started off, Matt. I started off hand dialing with my folders. So if you have your June folder, you print this lead off, you make a note of it, right? her and her boyfriend are renting it out. And then I would put on that note, call to see if they like being a landlord. And if they are, if they're, uh, if they're uh, possibly looking at selling in the future. Okay. And what happens over time is you start putting all these leads into these folders, right? And when I talk about pipeline maturity, what I'm talking about there is over time, doesn't happen right away. Over time, leads start coming out of the bottom because you're pushing these people further down a conversion funnel. You know what I mean? Yep. All right, cool. Somebody um, respond to my text though. Oh, they did? Jessica did. All right. So was that, was that a FISBO or a forum? That was, oh. Yeah, that's a FISBO. She was uh, the one that's... Uh, yes, I see it. Yeah. So what did she say? She said, yes, this is? She said, yes, exclamation point. Sorry, I don't, I don't have this number. Who is this? All right, good. So just say, hey, this just say, uh, this is Matt. I'm a realtor. Just had a couple quick questions about the home for sale. Can you jump on a quick call? Okay. And if she says yes, let's call her and go through the script. So while you're while you're texting her, I'll call the next uh, for rent by owner. This is good um, pickup rates though. I think we've been calling for 30 minutes. We've done. 
I don't know, four or five contacts and generated three. Six, one, four, five, four, five, eight, let me call the other one. Okay, so so that one I'm calling right now. This one on uh, Catalpa. Mm -hmm. That's a property management property manager. So take that one off your list. Okay. I'm gonna call the next one down. Are you in Columbus, your office? Yeah, yeah. 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 Sean Hood with Coldwell Banker King Thompson. Mm. If you would, please leave a deep. So there you go. So that one's a realtor. Yeah. So that, that one can come off. Why don't you call the next one down that has the email address provided? All right. Uh, no, it says this call may be recorded. It's a property manager. Yep. Let's go to the next one. Do you have a lot of for rent by owners? Well, I guess you can go back and look at what you have available, but. Um, yeah. And I tried to eliminate them because usually if they're by a property management, they have a very similar um, description. Right. So That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point. This is Kathleen McElwee. Please leave a message. At the tone, please record your message. She said, uh, and just so you know, with that, with that text, yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Yeah. What did she say? She said, sorry, we have sold it. Okay. Um, so I would respond with, um, we have some options here. Okay. So, so most realtors right now are going to just drop it. Yeah. And we can drop it too, but the way I look at these opportunities right now is I say, okay, I have nothing, so I have nothing to lose. So, so I, I may stay in the pocket and ask her one last question. Um, so just, I would just say, uh, did you already close or are you working um, through an offer with a buyer? Question mark. Okay, yeah. We'll try one more time. Did you already close or? Oh, did you already close? Or are you still in process with the buyer? Okay. So tell me, so why you do that? Tell me, tell me about the mindset. I want to talk about that a little bit because I got to uh, cut out a little early today, but I want to make sure I want to understand kind of, you know, where you're at in your mindset, what's keeping you from being consistent. Yeah. So early on when I joined the program, I um, got a listing appointment and textbook, you know, how you suggest. Um, we actually still have a really good report. And I just saw on Trulia today that he went off market. And I checked the tax records and it shows that he's still the owner. So I am going to follow up with him after this. Um, but anyway, he found his own buyer. Um, but after the listing appointment, he, you know, took my advice and lowered the price himself, found his own buyer. And then after that, I kind of um, struggled to, you know, get back into it, I guess. I mean, I have been making calls, but I have not been consistent. Yeah. Did did that experience with him like deflate you a little bit or, or, or like take the wind out of your sails? Yeah, a little bit. 
Okay. I mean, but we still have a good rapport. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's really what um, is making me struggle. I'm not sure. Well, what do you, so, you know, when you get up, let's, let's just say come Monday morning. Okay. You, and you have this decision that every agent faces every morning. And I, and that is, all right, am I going to do it today or not? You know, it's like this thing that's always weighing on us, right? Like I know in order for me to build my business, I have to play offense and go out there and reach out to prospects because I don't know about you, Matt, but they're not calling me, <laughs> right? I don't have a bunch of people calling me every day to come sell their houses. Now that's grown over the years with referrals and past clients. But for you, I would imagine, is your phone blowing up with people wanting to buy and sell houses? Yeah. No. So, so when you make the decision to maybe not prospect, tell me kind of what, what goes through your mind at that point where you say, you know what, I'm not going to do it today. Um, so for instance, I come to the office to prospect just because it's quiet in here. Um, I guess an excuse I used yesterday for not prospecting was it was snowing out. Um, and I just didn't feel like coming here. Uh, it's a lame excuse, really. Okay. Well, I mean, if I could offer, you know, anytime somebody struggles with the consistency, there, there could be many, 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 many things happening. And if you want, I can offer up a, a couple pieces of advice, you know, as we head into the end of the year. And so I think over all the years of me actually prospecting and fighting the same demons that everybody fights, <coughs> excuse me, and now coaching agents like I do, you know, it comes down to a couple things. No, number one is if an agent's not consistent, it could be that their deep rooted belief around prospecting is, is maybe wavering, meaning this, meaning, because I fought this for a long time, was like, okay, if I go and spend an hour or two on the phone, uh, I know for sure I'm going to get my head kicked in. I just, I don't know if I'm going to get great results. So therefore, you know, I'm, I'm losing the battle in my mind to not do it because maybe I should be doing something else because there's no direct response or no direct result of the activity. Now, when an agent has that mindset, that tells me that they are uh, too attached to the outcome and also, Matt, also, they don't understand the, 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 the law of the harvest because they haven't experienced it yet. You've never experienced calling one of these leads that we just generated today and then getting the listing next year in 2021. When that happens for a realtor, everything changes. They understand the compound effect, but now it's just words. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Um... I think after my first deal, I'll feel more confident. I think that's what I'm lacking right now is confidence because I am a fairly new agent. Yeah. So I haven't experienced like uh, any of this. Um, Just wins. You haven't experienced wins. Exactly. Yeah. So, so what, 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 that's, that was going to be my next thing is what you're going to want to do. Your wins is um, all needs to be focused on really right this second on preview appointments. Okay. I mean, that is your win. You know what I mean? Like what I would be doing if I was you is saying, okay, how many people can I physically go meet every week? And that is where you're at right now in your business, you know, because you can't go necessarily from where you're at right now to go out there and taking a listing because it sounds like you don't have a pipeline yet. Would that be accurate? That's accurate, yeah. Yeah. So, so what we have to do is we need to build the pipeline. Well, how do I do that? The only win, and you could be doing this all day long. You know exactly what to say. You could potentially set three to five uh, preview appointments a week, only calling 20 to 30 minutes a day. Would you agree? Yeah. And that is the building block uh, on your way to building confidence is saying, okay, let me, let me use this face-to-face -face pillar as the evidence that my efforts are being, are effective. And then what's going to happen is naturally, as you know, being part of our program through all of those face-to-face -face meetings, opportunities will start to arise. 
then you'll get into setting listing appointments and it just works that way. So I, I think for you, the focus has got to be in January for you is like, let's get on 15, 20 preview appointments. That's, that is the win. Okay. Because here's the thing. The reason why I think a lot of agents struggle with that being the win, like me, they hear the words I'm saying, but they're like, well, that doesn't give me any money. Well, you have to go through that anyways. So if you don't do it, I guarantee you there's no money. Yeah. That, that, that I will promise you, you know, because people want to go right from where they're at to the money. And that's the issue with real estate because the work we do manifests in how long typically? 40 to 60 days. Yeah. And I would say even longer, 60 to 90 days. So, so if an agent, and then I'll leave you with this, Matt, this mindset. Every day you fail to prospect is push is prolonging your chance at succeeding another 90 days, another 90 days. That's what I tell every agent. Like you're not going to feel it today, but I'm telling you every time we fail to do our job, we're going to, it's going to just prolonging the pain. So you're always going to be in pain. You just have to decide which pain do you want more or less? Do you want a, the pain of regret where you look back in, in four or five months from now and say, damn, if I was prospecting this whole time, I would have listings in the ground for sure. Or do you want to be in the pain of prospecting every day, uh, challenging yourself, you know, really getting fulfillment through overcoming the fear? That's the conscious choice that we have to make daily. Yeah, I appreciate the tough love. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully it helps you. You know, I, I think about these things that have helped me, but but I'm in the the pain thing for me when I when I learned from Darren Hardy, which is one of my mentors. You know, that was the thing that probably impacted me the most was, I mean, I think you would agree, you're going to be in pain either way. You're going to be in the pain of guilt of not doing your job and not hitting your goals and not making the money that you want, feeling bad, you know, all those things that's painful, right? Yeah. Or we could just make these phone calls, <laughs> you know, which right. is still painful, but I don't know about you, but the calls that we just made, the ones that you talked to, the ones I talked to. And if we're being honest with each other, I don't think that that was that painful. No, it wasn't. I mean, it was real simple. The biggest hurdle for me is the very first call. And then after that, I feel like I have some momentum. That's right. That's right. And, and so now that's a great point. So, so you have to think, okay, how can I hack my own brain? Well, that's where the accountability partner comes in is to get you to that first dial, you know? So if you jump on a Zoom like this with two or three people, just starting off small, you know, I know you've heard me say some crazy outlandish things. Maybe you just grab a group of new agents and say, guys, girls, let's just do tw a 20 minute block. Yeah. Start off with a 20 minute block five days a week would be a great thing for you to start in January. Okay. You know, cause, cause now you're showing up for other people. You will let yourself down, but us as humans, we have a tough time letting others down. So I would grab a handful of people from our coaching group. And just say, who wants, to, who's struggling with consistency? I'd post this in the Facebook group today. Get a free Zoom account, right? And do a 20, 30 minute session five days a week. And let's build on that. And that 20, 30 minutes, all of you guys should be focused on getting that face to face preview. And then maybe you have a contest around it with your little group to say, okay, let's see who can get on the most face to face appointments and have some fun with it. All yeah. these little things will help you. Yeah. Um, she, Jessica did text back. She said, we're in contract. I'm happy to let you know if anything falls through. Perfect. So there you go. So, so where we would have let that go, a lot of agents would have just stopped. We stayed in the pocket. We asked another question. So now let's respond to Jessica and just say, that would be great. What, um, uh, what I'll do, let's use the same strategy. Just say, that sounds great. What I'll do in the meantime is send you a quick email okay. with my for sale by owner backup plan in the event this deal falls through. Maybe it's something we can talk about in the future. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Question mark.
sent. Awesome. And you ended it with a question mark, correct? It is, yeah. Yeah. So, so good stuff. So I'm going to message you these, but if she says, so, so now you know what to do after that. If she responds, you just grab her email, you send her the FISBO backup plan. Yeah. All right. I'm going to message you these. And, um, you know, I'm serious, man. I, I, I really think, Matt, just hearing you on these calls, that's just the thing is we, we fight these internal demons. But when you have an outsider look in, you can see all these people on YouTube commenting how good you are. It helps because you don't know any of them. They're all complete strangers. They're fighting the same demons you're facing. You're on here live YouTube calling, right? And you sound great. You have great confidence. You know the scripts. It's just this inner battle that we have to win on a daily basis. Uh, and then once somebody is able to win that inner, that inner battle, the face off with the man in the mirror, things become great. So, so I'm excited to watch you as you continue going. Do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, not really, no. Cool. So did she respond? She did not, no. I, I am just checking my notes because I think I did have something, but... Oh, yeah, like the brand new Fizbo's that hit the market. Sometimes on the script, it says, are you open to an agent bringing you a fully qualified buyer? If they're brand new, sometimes they say, well, I'm not sure if we're open to that just yet. And... uh. I kind of get struggled to get around that. All right, perfect. So, so that question is designed just to see where they're at in the process. But if they say no to that, then you just respond with the same qualifying question. Um, what will you just get right into the qualifying question? So if they say no, you know, I don't know if we need to do that at this point. No worries, I totally get it. You know, if a couple of weeks goes by or a month goes by and, and you don't get a buyer on your own at that point, would you consider some other options? It's an easy next move to get them to say, yeah, yeah. If we can't do this thing on our own, we'd be open to some other options. Okay. And, and then when they say yes to that, then you can start getting into some of the motivation and you're going to lead that phone call to generating a lead by getting the email and getting them your FISBO backup plan um, or potentially a preview appointment. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Excellent. Awesome. Well, Matt, thanks for jumping on with me today. Hopefully you got some value. I'm going to message you these email addresses. Um, and then, yeah, we'll look forward to a huge, huge 2021 together. Super helpful. Thanks, Brandon.